Hello my friends, how are you? Welcome again, it's Brother Ray, I hope you're doing well. And today I'm making this video to actually answer a question that was submitted on the one of my videos pertaining to the verse in Ecclesiastes 9.5. I will go with the verse and then I will also share some other verses to explain that verse and I will mention the question that was sent in by our beloved friend. So the verse says, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have there any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. So we shared that video, we were talking about what happens when someone dies. And basically we said that when someone died, they're just in the grave waiting for Jesus to come. A dreamless, just dead sleep. And then I have a good question. Now this is a very popular question. It's a very good question. The question was sent in by my friend Babaskit. 2757 and his question was so what about the verse that says that um, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord now that's a very good question my friend and I'm happy that you sent in that question because a lot of folks has trouble with this particular verse and I'll do my best with the help of the Holy Spirit to explain this verse to you today and to those who are listening as well now, something I want to share is that most of the times when we read in the Bible and you come across a verse, the answer for that verse may lie right around that verse. You just have to go back up a few uh, verses, read the verses above, and then maybe read the verses below. And the answer usually lies right within that verse. So let me read that verse for you and also for the audience followers are watching so they'll know what verse we're talking about. We're talking about 2 Corinthians 5, verse 8. And it says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And that was the question. So the question is, if we say that the person who died is in the grave and the memory of them are forgotten, then why does Paul say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord? But I just mentioned, when we read the verse, we should, do, we should read the other verses, not just the one verse. And let's see what the Bible says in the same verses if we read 2 Corinthians 5, 8 to 10. I'll read all three verses so you'll hear the context of it, and then I will explain it, and then I'll add some other verses in as well so we'll have a full understanding of the context of this particular verse. And this is what it says. We are confident, I say, and willing rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Now we just read 2 Corinthians 8, sorry, 2 Corinthians 5, 8 to 10. Now the context of this verse is showing you that this is not talking about now, it is actually talking about the future. And I can point that out right in these verses where it says that. Now if you go back to verse 9, it says, Wherefore, you know what, let me start with verse 8. Paul says, We are confident, I say, and willing, willing, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Now verse 9 says, Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent. Now let's stop there. Whether present or absent means that the present means that if you're still alive today. Now the absent means those who are dead. Remember we're talking about the state of the dead, those who are absent from the body, present with the Lord. But Paul said, whether, whether present, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, that we may be accepted of him. Accepted of who? Accepted of Jesus Christ when he comes the second time. Because we see that whether we are alive righteous and whether we died righteous, we need to strive to be saved when Jesus comes the second time. Now look at verse 10. Verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. When will we appear before the judgment seat of Christ? We're all going through the judgment right now. So when Jesus comes, he will give us the reward. It says now, now let me just hold the pin there for a moment. 
So basically what I just mentioned is that those who have died, they basically have died righteous or they have died lost. And I want to mention that this is a touchy subject for all of us because we all have been touched by death. We all have family members and friends who have died and are in the grave and we would love to see them again. But in the grave, there's only two sets of people. You have the righteous dead and the lost dead. It's the same with the living. You have the righteous living and you have the lost living or those who will be lost. But we don't have to be lost. This is why Jesus has given us the gospel, that we can give our lives to him, that we can be saved. Let me continue. It says that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or or bad. So clearly this is talking about the future when Jesus comes. It's talking about you will get your reward when Jesus comes a second time. It's not talking about when you die right away you go off to heaven. Now let me share another few verses with you before I get go back to that and expound it a little bit more so you'll see in the context. If you look at John 5 28 and 29 this is what the Bible says. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So we see clearly again what John is saying here is that those who have died righteous will come forth to the resurrection of life. Those who have died lost will come forth to the resurrection of damnation. So no one that we know from our family and friends right now is off in heaven looking down on us, looking at how we're struggling in this world of sin. You know, my friends, this is a doctrine that the devil is trying to push on people to make us believe that we can have immortality of the soul, where we can believe that when we die, we go on living. But Jesus says that he is coming again to receive us. Now, if you think clearly about what the Bible says, and if you think clearly about just the way how God is organized, why would Jesus need to come a second time to receive us if he's already, or if we are our loved ones who have died, are already in heaven with him? If when someone dies, they're already in heaven with Jesus, why would Jesus need to come again to receive us? There would be no need for a second coming. So we see that what Jesus is saying here is that I'm coming again a second time to receive the righteous from the dead and the righteous from the living. Look at 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. This is what it says. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the ear, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So those who are in the graves, the righteous dead, they will be resurrected first, and the righteous living will be caught up to meet God in the air. What a glorious day that will be, my brothers and sisters. Jesus is coming again to take us home with him. No one, no one that died from our family and friends or, or relatives is in heaven or in hell right now. They're just in the grave with that dead, dreamless sleep. They're just there, their body's turning back to dust, and they're waiting on Jesus to come. Now, what does it mean then to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord? Basically, what it means is simply this. If someone died 10 years ago, the last thing that they saw before they died, let's say they saw a loved one and that they, they died at that moment. When Jesus comes, let's say Jesus comes to there tomorrow and they died righteous, that family member, and Jesus burst the clouds, the next thing that they will see is their glory, the glory of the Savior, Jesus Christ, coming to resurrect them. They will just see Jesus. For the 10 years, they have no memory of anything or they have no thought of what happened between those 10 years to the day that Jesus comes. All they will see is Jesus coming in the clouds and they are going with their Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, whom they trust. And they will also see their family and friends who are righteous ascending to meet them in the air so that we all can go to heaven together. 
My friends, that's what the verse means to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Because the next thing you know after you die, if you die righteous, think about it. You close your eyes in death and you open your eyes to seeing your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what it means. Your next thought is the thought of eternal life with your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My friends, Jesus died for each and every one of us so that we can have eternal life with him. He wants to save us. He's preparing a place for us and he's coming back for us. And the loved ones that we've lost, who've died righteous, you know, Jesus will reunite them with us. When we live our lives righteously in Christ, we will ascend to heaven. We will dwell with God forever. And it shows us how God loves us and cares for us so much. Because when we look at how God is good and how God is just and the love he has, he would never put anyone through where he would have them in heaven looking down upon us, going through the things of this world today. All the sickness, all the diseases, all the disasters. Why would God take your family to heaven and have him looking down on you right now, seeing the anguish you're going through? My friends, God is good and God is just. God is a God of order. And he's coming again. In John 14, uh, verses 1 and 2, he says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I've told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again. Why is he coming? He's coming to receive us unto himself, that where he is, we may be also. One day, Jesus is going to burst those clouds. And he's going to come to receive the righteous loved ones that we have lost. And he's going to come to receive the righteous alive. My friends, you can be found in the righteous. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's study his word and let's not be deceived by false teachings which will lead us from Christ. Because Jesus Christ is preparing a place for all of us. So to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord is not talking about those who die are off in heaven. It is talking about those who died righteously will be resurrected on that glorious day. In a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, they will be changed. When their eye closed and their eyes open, that's a twinkle of an eye, they will have a glorified immortal body, which God will give to them on that day. And we who are alive will have a glorified immortal body as well. And we all will ascend to heaven with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope that that verse gives you some encouragement. And I hope that you continue to pray for your loved ones, pray for your family, and continue to study the Bible to show yourself approved unto God. Because as I mentioned, one day Jesus will burst the clouds to take all those who love him and all those who trust him, all those who abide with him, and all those who have faith with him to that glorious place that he's prepared for you and me. Keep studying, my friends. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Remember to send me your questions. I'll be happy to answer them according to the knowledge that God has given me. And always remember that God is always good. Until the next time, this is Brother Ray. Be blessed. Bye-bye.